All right, I think we are back. We'll see if it sticks around this time. I think it crashed because I wasn't able to see anything that was going on. So we'll see if this one works out a little better. Looks like we're going a little smoother now. Thanks for joining me if you're in here. Um, I appreciate if you drop a like while you're in here. Drop a comment. Let me know where you're from, what you're doing, how your Friday's going. I'm just going through photos from the first volleyball game of the year for Pittsburgh State. Yo, Cody, welcome back. I think I crashed a little bit ago, but... I think I got it figured out now. Let me know if everything sounds good since you're in here. Mic, music, whatever it may be. I think I got the latency on the mic fixed as well, so, or on the webcam. Nice. Glad it's all working out this time. How's uh Friday's been lazy. Nice. Yeah, mine was too until I had to go work. I didn't really have to go do this today because I'll be uh, doing a game tomorrow. But since the wife was at work, I figured I'd drive on over for a game. Get a little jump start on the season. It's a little rough getting back into volleyball because it's, it's a lot faster pace. And you're not really sure what lens you want to use. So I kind of use the 300 and the 85 millimeter tonight. I'm just going through the 300 millimeter images right now though. So it works when you're up top. Down low is when it gets a little iffy because it's pretty tight. So these all all these images are going to be from the three hundred millimeter two point eight. Um, I also had the 85 millimeter on a second body, which I used for the third game, um, or third, yeah, I guess it'd be the third game within the match that I shot. 
I think is the correct terminology for volleyball. But anyways, uh, I use it a little bit on the floor when I move down. Right now I'm up on like a walking platform that's up above the stands so I could shoot down. Um, it eliminates the seating and stuff like that. So I kind of like that angle with the 300. Um, tomorrow I think I'll switch up the lenses and I'll probably run the 24 millimeter for some huddle shots behind the bench when they have timeouts. And then I'll probably run the 70 to 200 and shoot from the floor, I think. The 300 was a little too tight from the floor. Um, I'm not sure if I'll get into those images tonight, but basically I just sit on the court, um, like almost right in line with the net. And so from there, you just kind of have to worry about people walking in front of you and stuff, but it's usually not too bad. Um, the 85 was nice, but I think having like 100 or maybe up to 200 be a little better from the floor. I would love to get away with the 85, but it's still a little too wide from down there. The 85 is nice because it's at f1.8 and our gym's a little dark, but it's just a little too wide like i said to get away with it so Hello, honey. When getting back into sports photography, do you have to find your groove again or do you pick up where you left off? Um, I feel like with volleyball specifically, um, it definitely takes me a little bit to get back into the groove of how I was doing it the previous year. Um, it's not a sport that I really follow other photographers on. Um, so I don't see it a lot on like my Instagram feed when I'm scrolling like my, on the sports side of things. So like tonight I was not really sure where to start and that's why I started up top because it's out of the way. Nobody can really watch you because no one else is up there. Um, so I held off going down to the court for like two games. So I shot from this angle, I shot up here and I kind of moved around um, just up top and then at one point I move over to a second platform that's kind of like further back over to the right um, because we switch sides on the court at some point so I'm shooting towards them but then you got the net in the way so it's kind of like can you hit focus through the net and is the net going to be too distracting um, but I knew there'd be multiple rounds um, and another court flip so I kind of use tonight to like stretch my legs I guess you could say to figure out what I wanted to do and I think up top of the 300 is nice but I think I'd be better off with the 7200 maybe on the court and shooting up at them from below um, 
but we'll see. I'll probably still pack the 300 and shoot up top for at least one game, or at least find a different advantage point, maybe in the lower stands, and go from there and see if I can uh, find a good angle there. And also, if you're watching me crop these and noticing that I'm not doing what, let's see, I can do this, and that would be a better image. Um, the reason I can't do that, at least for the school's images, because they want, they ask for them to be um, left horizontal. So I have to keep them like this. That way they can use it for publications. It gives them area for graphics if they want to use it for a graphic, whatever it may be. So um, in my personal use, I can all, I can go back and crop it and for like Instagram or whatever. But when it comes to the stuff I give them, I have to keep it like this so they can use it for graphics or whatever they're going to use it for. So. How do you get all that gear around? Yeah. Um, oh, what's in the bag video has been uh, shot about five times over the past probably three years of doing YouTube, and I've never gotten to finishing that edit <laughs> to the point where I like it enough not to delete it. So one of these days, I'll. Uh, I should probably do one on at least my sports gear and see how I pack it because my bag is giant, but back before I had my big bag, I would take a small bag, I would load it up with what I think I wanted, but what fit, and then I'd get there and be like, man, I wish I had that lens or I wish I had that teleconverter or whatever. So I overpack a giant bag and uh, it breaks my back, but you don't have to wear it very long because you just wear it to where you're going to unload and go from there. So the nice thing about when I'm shooting at Pitt State, I usually have a room where I can kind of put my bag down, unload my gear, and I can always just go back to it and nothing's going to get taken because it's only for like the coaches and maybe the athletes or the security. So I have a little media room I can kind of put things away in. I really like this image, but the man in blue just kind of takes too much away from it for me. Too distracting. I like getting the celebration shots, but we will have to find a different one.
What are some perks of shooting the college of sports that isn't something people would think of? Hmm. It's a good question. Gotta think about that one. Uh, yes, Craven does have all the good questions. Um, the perks. That's a hard one. Um, I don't know if they're really not uh, what people would think, but some perks that do come to mind is most of the athletes want to see the photos, so then they follow you, so then they like your photos, they'll reach out to you, that helps your algorithm. So you gain followers, you gain um, engagement, which ultimately pushes your photos out on at least Instagram and Twitter. Um, and then the connections that you make, even when you're shooting against a school, you'll usually meet the other photographer or somebody that works for the other school. And even though you're playing against each other in photography or videography, it's some people make it too much of a competition, but I like to meet the other photographers, ask them what gear they're using ask them what camera they're using, what they like about it, what they don't like about it, and just kind of like chit chat um, in between plays if we're close to each other or whatever. And usually follow each other on Instagram or Twitter so we can see each other's work. Um, and it's always kind of cool to like end up meeting someone that you have followed for a while on Instagram. Um, so the school that we played in football on Thursday, UCM, I've followed their photographer for a while. He also shoots for the Chiefs in Kansas City. He does some concerts at one of the big co concert venues. Um, so I asked if he was coming down. He doesn't travel with the team for away games. Um, but there has been instances where I have followed a photographer for a team. And then they've came to our stadium and I've got to meet him. So it was kind of cool. It's always cool to meet other creatives in this field. Um, despite if they're at the rival team or whatever it may be. Um, yeah, those are some perks. I don't know if there's really any perks I can think of that would be something that no one else would already think about. Um, I guess there's free food at every game. Um, it's nothing crazy. Like today, volleyball is pizza. Um, most, most basketball games track and football it's usually sandwiches cookies pop chips water um gatorade so i guess that's a perk that some people might not realize is the free food if you're in the if you're working the game in any sort of way there's food for you um which is better than nothing so and you don't have to go to the concession stand and pay you know eight dollars for a water exaggeration but you get what i mean so yeah, free food. Free food. All right. Back to it since I completely stopped doing anything when I was answering that. You might wonder, why this photo? There's no ball. I was looking at KU Volleyball on Instagram today, or maybe it was Facebook, to get inspiration because they're local. Um, and they had photos in there that action photos like this that didn't have the ball in there and I was like well if they can do it I guess we can do it so it allows me to get other photos like if I miss the ball but you got good action of someone going for a block you know it can still be used question for the chat here is this distracting having the net in the way or does it work because it's focused on the players I uh, I'm gonna put them in the folder and leave it up to the school if they want to use them. Uh, do you feel like shooting volleyball more now? Then do you like shooting volleyball? Oh, do I like it now more? Um, yeah, I probably like it more now, just because I've done it. I mean, when I first started with Pitt State Volleyball, I didn't really shoot much. I think I shot it twice for the newspaper, so now I do a little more, so. Mm-hmm. 
there's any Pittsburgh Morning Sun viewers in here, I might have a photo in the newspaper whenever they print again. They had me send a couple photos to them, so. All right, so it's not distracting to my two viewers. Thank you. This is the benefit of the 300. I mean, this isn't cropped. I'm kind of back away from the cord a little bit. It works out. The 200 would have been a little backed off. The 85 would have been too wide, but you would have got more players in, but I like the separation here. Here's that other angle I was talking about earlier, I think, if you heard that, Cody. Um, there's like a staircase that goes up to the top platform, and you could, there's a landing halfway down. So this is where I'm shooting from now because they switch sides. And uh, another good question. Let's see. What we're... So... Mm. I didn't necessarily choose Canon for sports originally. Um, so I had a Nikon D3S, that giant camera that you saw in Sam's office, just one generation under. Uh, Sam had the D4, I had the D3S. Um, the S was, I think S was for sports or speed or something. Anyways, it shot like 12 frames per second mechanically, um, which is super fast for an old camera like that from like 2009 anyways then I wanted to get into weddings so I reached out to Tim Toms from the O'Shea um, and I started doing weddings and the first wedding that I shot with him I brought my own gear I had the Nikko D3S with my 70 to 200 and I think a wide angle as well and he had the Canon 5D Mark IV I think it was and so I kind of heard my shutter compared to his and mine was super loud, super loud camera. And I was like, Ugh. and then like, it was also very sports based camera. So I was like, maybe I should look into a new camera. So I was like, I'll sell all my Nikon gear. I had that and like another Nikon and some lenses. I was like, I guess I could sell my Nikon gear, get a Canon and start doing weddings with Tim. And the best part about getting into the 5D Mark IV is it also had video and the video is touch screen. So like you can just touch the screen on someone's face, it'll focus on their face. And so I was like, the Nikon can't do that. Nikon was very old compared to the 5D Mark IV. So I think it was just seeing that Tim used it and how good it was from like YouTube videos and stuff like that. So I got into the 5D Mark IV and basically I only had a Nikon at that point because I wanted to keep one body for some of the lenses that I had that I was too afraid um, to lose. Because typically if you switch from like Nikon to Canon or Fuji to Nikon or whatever, usually you're gonna lose a lot of money trying to switch to a different brand. And so I finally just made the jump, lost some gear, had to earn it back and find gear that was equivalent because some stuff that Nikon makes, Canon doesn't make, or it's just super overpriced on Canon's side. So it just took me a while and it's just kind of stuck with me now. Um, I haven't had any downside of using Canon, so it's been perfect for weddings. And then jumping into the mirrorless, the R6 has been perfect for sports and weddings. So it's just kind of easy to stick with them at this point.
Pitt State won tonight, by the way. If uh, anyone was wondering. They, uh, they had a pretty strong final game to take the win. game sports here's my photo from the football game last night as you can see this is a uh, horizontal so that's why I don't crop that's a photo from last year um, our friend Sam took that photo in the studio but to last year's photo as well uh, right here's with the 70 to 200 probably at like 90 to 100 couple cross-country photos so from last year but yeah I was seeing if the uh, volleyball photo was up yet but it's not so All right, whoever is in here, I'm gonna go grab a water. I'll be right back. Uh, if you are new here, I'm going through volleyball photos from tonight's game at Pitt State. And this here is the 300 on the floor. Super tight, super close. Obviously everything is completely blown out in the background. Boca wise, blurred out wise. Um, it's just a little too tight. It's a little hard to capture the, the action when you're that tight. But it works well when you want to get the coaches talking. You always have, you always need a coach photo. Thanks, honey.
What has been your favorite sport to shoot? Um, I'll start. I'll, I'll do college first. I would say probably track and field because you can go shoot something every like half hour that's different from the last. Um, and you get more creative with your angles because typically there's more room to work with. Um, so I think track and field might be my favorite when it comes to college sports, just because there's so many different ways to shoot whatever you're shooting, whether it's pull vault, long jump, high jump, hurdles, sprints, uh, throwing, and then outside of, well, I guess outside of college sports, it's been, I don't know, five or six years now. I shot boxing when boxing was down at Buffalo Run Casino. And that was very early on in my sports photography uh, grind, I guess you can say, journey. Um, and I got rid of it, so I haven't shot it since. But some of my favorite images are from that. One of the last competitions I won online was with a boxing photo for Tamron cameras. Um, I took like an honorable mention. That was when I was a year and a half into sports. A year and a half of owning a camera. So, um, yeah. I'd say track and boxing. If I can do it again, I would definitely do boxing again. And track is just... It's so fun because, I mean, it's indoors for part of the year. It's outdoors at the end of the year. And you could just find different angles and new ways of shooting the event because you have so many athletes I'd pull up those boxing photos if I knew exactly where to find them let's see through my Flickr real quick. I know I've got a folder on here somewhere with some of them. Hmm. All right, here we go. Here we go. We got some boxing here. I don't know if there's a year on these. 2017. So this was with the Nikon D3S, 28 to 70. And this is from Buffalo Run. I don't know if this is the first or the last time, but we can just click through these. I was ringside. One of like two or three photographers allowed ringside. Here, because I was shooting for the Globe, the Joplin newspaper that time, and they were one of the sponsors. So, like, I mean, you can see how close I got there. I mean, I'm like right up in his grill. Um, yeah. Some of these guys went on to still. I mean, some of them are still boxing. He's still boxing. There's another guy in here that's still boxing. He was undefeated last time I knew. Uh, Kinsey Morrison. I can't remember if his dad was in like Rocky Four or something like that. Uh, I think this is Chris Connell, maybe. Uh, he still boxes and he still uses one of my photos for his display picture on Instagram. Last I knew, like three of these guys are out of Ohio, but that's one of my favorite ones. I miss focus and I hit the hand of the dude but with the water it just looks so cool so yeah I wish I can go back to some uh, some boxing that'd be a blast you gotta put a lit you gotta put a filter on your lens or you're getting blood on it too but uh I 
I gotta figure out who this guy is real quick. Let's see. Mackenzie Morrison. Yeah. So his dad. I think his dad was Tommy. Yeah, Rocky Five. He was in Rocky Five. So yeah. I don't know if there's a Let's see if I can find a Oh, here we go. Kevin Stallone. Anyways. Uh, yeah, that, that photo of the hand being in focus and the head out of focus with the water spraying, it's one of my favorite images. I've actually got it framed somewhere in this house probably stacked up on my bookshelf behind me but let's see if we can get back to the albums here I've got hmm anyways that's some of my boxing stuff from back in the day um yeah I can't imagine what my photos would be now if I uh with the knowledge that I have now and the autofocus that I have now and the lenses like because that wide angle lens was soft it it was a rough lens but it's what I had Well, I appreciate everyone that's in here tonight. Looks like there's four of you. Thank you to all four of you that are in here. I know this isn't super exciting, but if you have any questions about sports, photography, gear, I'll do my best. I'm just here to vibe out, edit some photos, Uh, if you're on Instagram, you could follow me at DL Sports. I post pretty often there now that sports is back. Uh, if you're on Twitter, I'm on Twitter as well at Gorilla Photog. Um, that's kind of a mix of my YouTube sports, random comments, random retweets from the gaming community or YouTube, or I post some photography there as well. So if that's more up your alley, that is uh, definitely something you can use to follow me. I think I have a different photo after that. Yeah, we're going to go with that one. She might not lock her face in this one, but sometimes you just need that coach photo of them getting hyped up. If I had to pick one lens to shoot with, what would it be? It kind of depends on the sport, I guess. If I had to go with one lens for every sport, I'd probably go with the 70-200, which I hate to say because I'm not a big fan of it, but 
it's very versatile and you can literally use it for any sport pretty much except for maybe soccer soccer's a little tough baseball's a little tough with it as well such big fields I might keep this one. It is a little cut off, but you can see, you know, 98% of her face, so. They like to use these photos when you have to post about, like, a big win or something. They want that celebration photo, so. The 300 on the ground is good for these because they're nice and tight and the background's completely gone, so. That's all. That's all of them. Good set of images. I'll be back tomorrow. Let's see what time we are tomorrow. Eleven thirty. Eleven thirty tomorrow and seven o'clock, but we're not gonna go to seven o'clock. Is we are going to go to a concert we want tickets to. So 11.30 it is. Very nice. Oh, Phil's TV. Sorry, just came in. Quick setup. Canon? Um, yeah, so for these photos tonight, I used the Canon R6 on all of them. And I used the... 300 f 2.8 the first generation non-image stabilized for it and then i uh i did use my 85 f 1.8 for the extra stop of light to go to 1.8 but i didn't go through those photos on stream um yes definitely hit that bell notification leave a like subscribe um, i'm gonna try to do these not after every sporting event like, I'm going to do softball tomorrow, but I'm not going to go live to go through those photos as well. Um, but 6400 ISO. Uh, some of them, yes. Um, the R6 does very well on 6400. Um, yeah, you can see it up here. I think I did drop down to like 4000 for some of them and just brought them back uh, in the... Ex yeah, some of these are 4000. And I just brought him back. It was only like half a stop under. Um, but yeah, so 300 f2.8, Canon R6. And I shot at f2.8 for all the photos. Uh, auto white balance to just adjust them in post. A couple of these I've got to go back and uh, they're a little warm. So I've got to go back and fix them or they're a little greenish. Anyways, um, I also use the 85. Tomorrow I'm going to use the 70 to 200. The 85 works on the court when you're down low. Um, but from where I shot most of these, I shot them mostly up. So, no, you're good. You're good, man. Or, yeah, Phil. No, you're good. I, I'm not done. I'm done going through the photos. But if you got questions, feel free to ask. So, you're good. But, yeah, uh, the high ISO on here is really good. I don't do a noise reduction. I don't have it on in the camera either. Um, but yeah, it's perfectly fine for what I'm doing and I've never let grain or ISO, uh, push me away. So I'm so used to when I first got into sports, I'd had to shoot at like 12,800 at most of the high school, uh, football fields. So 6,400 is nothing for this, for these new mirrorless cameras that are out today. So Tried a couple different angles shooting through the uh, through the net today. So 
the autofocus is really really good on the uh r6s very very good um thinking about getting two yeah i have two r6s as well um comes in really handy having that second camera for sports for weddings and if you want to do anything remote you have that second body you can uh hook a remote up to i haven't done anything with remotes because it's failed every time but yeah i would highly suggest the canon r6 but it also depends on what you're going to do but if you're going to do sports and stuff i think it's a good option um there's also the canon r3 it's a <laughs> it's pricey but um it's more of a, a traditional sports body it's got the bigger battery um but yeah I really enjoy the R6s. I've had them for definitely over a year now. I, maybe two years at this point. I feel like it can't be that long. I don't remember when the R6s came out. But I know I moved into the Canon R6 pretty quick after it came out. Because I had a Canon 5D Mark IV before moving over to mirrorless i guess it was 2020 so i probably got it in 2020 to be honest and then i got the second one probably 2021 and i've had no issues with them a lot of people say overheating and stuff but mine's never overheated except for when i was shooting video at a drag strip when it was like close to 100 degrees out and i was shooting for like 10 hours and it overheated towards the very end so that was about it but that was because i was shooting a lot of video and not really ever giving it time in the shade so well let's see you get paid correct yeah i get paid uh i freelance for the school so i don't work for the school directly like i'm not a like a official employee but like I'm their freelancer on contract. So I'm, I'm the guy they go to no matter what at first. And if I can't make it, then they'll look for someone or they just won't cover it. Uh, D one, uh, D two Pitt state is a D two school in Southeast Kansas. Pittsburgh state gorillas. Yeah, they used to have a full-time photographer, but they let her go, like, probably six years ago. So she went up north to go full-time at another school. And our school just hasn't moved back, in, back into that. So I'm just grinding and doing my thing for them, so... Um, so I do all the sports. Um, the only sport that we don't cover a lot of is cross country. And that's because we don't have a home race for cross country. Um, the only one that they do technically at home is a practice a, with uh, alumni. So alumni will come out and basically be their competition. Um, but other than that, it's a... Uh, Every sport. So the sports that we have is, let's see. I'll just pull up the website here in a second. Let's, just so I don't forget anything. So we've got baseball, basketball, men and women, cross country, men and women, football, track and field, men and women, softball, 
and women's basketball as well. I think I already said and volleyball. Um, that's it for the official sports, but we do have like, there's like Frisbee golf team. There's a couple rugby men and women's rugby. Um, there's probably some other stuff, but they don't ever have me cover that stuff. Cause they're not like officially they're like intramural or whatever. So, but yeah, I cover all the sports that we have at least at home. I'm hoping to get a couple of away games this year. Basketball is going to have a practice game or exhibition against KU up at Allen Fieldhouse. So I'm kind of hoping I can uh, travel up there with the men's team and shoot that. If you're uh, familiar with basketball, our new men's basketball coach is uh, Jeff Boshi from KU. He was at our rival school here in Joplin, Missouri at Missouri Southern. And then he came over to Pitt State this off season. So, so he has a little connection to take us up to KU for an exhibition game coming up. So, well, I'm in no hurry to leave. I've got the photos done. I do have another SD card to go through of the 85 millimeter photos, but this will get the school what they need for a while. So I appreciate everyone that came in all the questions, Phil's TV, Tara, Crayman. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming in, hanging out. And I guess I will probably see you guys in the next one. So thank you everyone for jumping in, uh, socials, will be updated to the bio on this video shortly after if not you can find me on instagram at dl sports and twitter at gorilla photog so i will see you guys in the next one